Boy howdy y'all, haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're all doing well and keeping those virus scanners running. Uh, let's talk a bit about VR chat. Uh, and let's all talk a bit about my microphone. Like I've been having so many, this is my fourth time trying to record this, okay? Like the first time it sounded like this, Avatar 3.0. Then the second time it sounded like this, VR chat 2020.3. And then I just got frustrated and tried it anyway. And now I'm here. So tell me in the comments if this is better. All right. So yeah, let's talk a little about VR chat. Uh, release wise, it's been pretty quiet up until now, like since the last time. Uh, there's been a couple things, right? Like uh, Udon updates, several of them. Uh, logging, mod messages, working on some possible unofficial Linux support, maybe, and some other things that aren't juicy enough for their own video. But this week, it's a bit different. Uh, this week, VRChat 2020.3.2 came out. No changes to the Unity version, which is still 2018.4.20f1. Uh, no Unity upgrading for you, which is great. However, there are now three SDKs. Count them. Let's see. SDK 2 for old avatars and worlds. SDK 3 for the new avatars 3.0 system. And SDK 3 for Udon. None of these are mix and matchable, by the way. Uh, they each need their own project. So keep that in mind if you're trying out new things. Uh, there's also, and this is kind of important, uh, no direct upgrades from SDK 2 to SDK 3 for avatars or for worlds. But you can give SDK 2 to SDK 3 a shot for worlds anyway by going and checking out my last Udon video where I made an SDK 3 world of Valgan by converting SDK 2 to SDK 3 at the beginning. Uh, it might not work for everybody, but it worked for me. So give it a shot. You can see that at the end of this video. So yeah, the juice. Avatars 3.0. Avatars on steroids and designed for people with basic Unity knowledge. Basic Unity knowledge. Uh, especially in uh, animators, animations, uh, animator layers, weights, blending, states, transitions, parameters, uh, masks, and state behavior. Uh, oh, don't, don't forget animation and state exit time, loop time for animations, time sync between layers, and blend trees. Which start to get a little bit more technical than all the other jargon I just said. You're not going to find any tutorials on any of that from me straight away. No, no, no. I'll be working on a Zero to Hero on Avatars 3.0 soon that will be mostly about recreating your old avatars into 3.0 avatars uh, or creating your first avatar in 3.0, uh, including a couple blend shapes and emotes and stuff. Now, the long and short of Avatars 3.0 is that you can create a ton of emotes, menus, wheels to choose stuff, death animations that stick you until you, you know, want to live again. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff. Music and dance. Pick your poison, really. Uh, sky is not necessarily the limit. I don't think you can break world rules with it, but I'm pretty sure people already have, and I'll hear about it in the comments by the end of the week. That's probably for sure. 3.0 won't be the only thing coming out today. Today? This week? This week? Last week? We also got a lot of new statistics, like uh, download size statistic. I can't show you it in prime time right here because there's nobody else on this lonely island but me but now when you check someone's performance stats uh, you can criticize their file size nice with this they've also added a download size limit to performance options which defaults to about 200 megabytes uh, which i can show you i don't need anybody for that so let's take a look so here we have our lovely menu and we're going to go to safety and then go to performance options and here you see the performance options, and uh, for avatar performance we have minimum displayed performance rank, which is, I have it set to medium because I like to go to dance worlds, and dance worlds are always like 70 people, and one or two very poor people in a 70 person world will kill you, and then maximum avatar download size, which is, I have it set to the default right now. Uh, you can put it up by 5 megabytes each by hitting left or right buttons, and uh, if you want to turn it off, just bring it all the way down to zero, you know, just click it until it gets there. This is also really nice because if you... I thought they fixed this. Pretty positive they fixed that. Wow, I'm wiggling. There we go. So now with that avatar size limit, not only do you not have to see them, but if they are too big, you won't download them. So people on connections where, you know, they're bandwidth metered, this is great for you because now you're not going to have like a 300 gigabyte bill and be like, how did that happen? Well, you downloaded like three people's avatar, so there you go. But the real question is, how am I gonna watch TV shows on somebody's t-shirt if I limit avatar file sizes? And I guess that might be a question for another time. But anyway, 
Big full body tracking changes next. Uh, the whole system was once again totally redone. And here's, let me, let me kind of explain why they did it. The primary point of reference for your avatar is now your head mounted display, where it was your arms in the past. And as you probably have experienced if you've had full body uh, in the past, uh, is if you extend your arm too far, you may have a chance of pulling on the rest of your body when you do that. Now, as you can see, it doesn't happen anymore. Um, but there's also a couple limitations to that um, because of the way the new system is. The new system is going to cause a lot of problems for people who are in oddly shaped C anime avatars. But I'm not in an anime avatar. I don't know what you're talking about. For those real life proportioned, you should easily fit into this system. VRChat has some best practices to make sure you're at least configuring the avatar right. Uh, and you know what? Let's do them right now. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Let's configure our avatar. All right. First, don't use other apps to manipulate your play, your play space. All right. Let me check. Here I go. I'm in OVR advanced settings, offsets. Oh, I have an, a Y axis slightly. So let's turn that off. Y axis is gone. Cool. Set your in-game height to your actual height. Okay. I could do that. Let me check. Do, 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 do. I am set to my actual height. And that's important because now, like I said, they're calculating from your, from your head mounted display now. So, wow, I just moved the microphone. If you are too tall or too short, you're going to just fall through the floor or raise, you know, raise the roof or, you know, whatever. It's not going to be a fun time. So at least start off at the right height. Keep in mind that when you're calibrating, positioning your feet relative to your avatar is also important. So get those balls right. So let's, let's do it right now. So calibrate. All right, here we go. We're calibrating. So I'm going to put my arms out like I always do. And, but but when I tilt my head, everything spins so I can't see my arms to make sure I'm actually doing it right. And hang on, let me look down to make sure that my balls are right. Oh, I can't do that because my entire body shifts down. I don't, I don't know where my feet are, so whatever. Okay. And we have some crossing because I could not see where my feet were. Anyway, if your instep is wrong like mine is, uh, you'll have to edit your T-pose in Blender or try to guess where your balls or your feet are or stand in front of a mirror and hope for the best. Uh, and if all else fails and she just doesn't work, like obviously my avatar is not the blue man. Hold on, let's, let's check the blue man. Maybe I'm just doing this wrong. All right, cool story, why bot? All right, so still got all those problems. Still can't see my feet. Looking down, yeah, let's find those feet. Hmm, well, I don't know, but anyway. Yeah, okay. I mean, my arms are straight and these are bent. So, and my feet, I mean, the feet are correct. So yeah, it's partially my avatar, partially the new system. It's uh, it's unfortunate, actually. It, this, this should work. Okay, so I'm not just being crabby. There's obviously some bugs to the system. It's not exactly perfect. Maybe my height's a little wrong. Who knows, really? Um, but if all else fails and she just don't work, like mine don't work, uh, use the old calibration method. And you can do that by right-clicking VR Chat and Steam, going to Properties, and adding as a launch icon dash dash legacy dash fbt as in full body tracking dash calibrate so legacy fbt calibrate that should get you back to the old system that pretty much wraps up the full body stuff so let's go back to other things um changes i look will be more i looky for all avatars so that's cool see i'm i'm i can i'm really i looky right now nice anyway uh, you might hear things around you a little differently as VRChat also upgraded to the latest audio spatializer, uh, the Oculus one. Now they're on the latest version, so that's good. And maybe you'll be able to uh, read people's lips with the latest lip sync libraries, but who really knows? When you throw down portals, they'll now disappear only when it times out or the world hits a hard cap, which is two times the limit instead of 1.5 times, which is how it used to be. Also, if you're in a world and the world is full, you can now rejoin it by clicking on the text on the top of the worlds menu. So just like bam, bam, worlds, there it is, and then go, and that's it. What? Just yesterday, this camera worked. I don't know what's happened. 
Oh hey, Shandy from the future here. Just forgot a couple things that are probably really important. So as you can see, if you use your right hand, you can toggle open a menu. And if you use your left hand, oh, you can also toggle open a menu. And this is the radial menu that they released with this new version of SDK 3. Uh, but it's also for SDK 2 avatars. So as you can see, you can use your left control stick to manipulate things with a quick toggle. So as you saw, I just changed at gestures on and off. And you can also go off to the right and choose expressions and this is just from the emote menu in the other menu they've actually changed it so you can't do that from there anymore so here I go clapping just by doing a quick flick uh, so let's go back real quick and now we can also check out the emojis and as you can see just by re doing a real quick flick you can just do whatever emoji you want. In fact, that's probably the fastest I've ever toggled an emoji in VR chat, so that's actually pretty impressive. And then we also, you can't see it, of course, because my excellent skills, but that was the config section. And here we go with the debug menu. And of course, I don't see anything in my debug menu because I have an SDK2 avatar, but obviously this will be useful for SDK3 because you can do just do so much with SDK3 that you're going to need a debug menu to actually debug any issues. We also have this AFK enabled system and let me just kind of show you what AFK enabled does first because that would make a lot more sense. So now I'm kind of like floating around like I don't know some sort of Abra or creepy child inside of a vat of goo or whatever. So yeah, that works by the uh, sensor inside your headset. So it'll only work for some headsets, so keep that in mind as well. There's also, of course, something that you can't see just below to the bottom left, and that's the turning on or off the toggle for flicking. So you can actually choose to flick or to click, and it's defaultly flicked. And as you can see here, uh, I just slapped this whole system on the HUD, and you can actually move it around on the HUD as well by using your hand and then you just click and it sticks where you've placed it. That's pretty impressive. Like this is good UI work. I really like it. And then we have another one called menu opacity and then you can choose between practically invisible, getting a little closer and then oh my gosh I can almost see it and then way too visible. So you have those options which is pretty cool. I wish they kind of like made it so you could just swirl the stick and choose one through that. And then you also have a small, medium, and large section for the menu, and you always probably don't need it that big, so you just kind of get it out of the way. And yeah, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, this patch has also led to a lot of new bugs, and people are pretty upsetty spaghetti over it. Like controller bindings being wrong, animations being incorrect, especially in SDK2, uh, avatar performance system bugs, gesture lock not working, full body calibration problems, as you've seen all sorts of fun. Uh, I'm hoping that VRChat is going to learn from this. Obviously, they've made a bunch of 24-hour patches to at least get rid of the major problems, but they released it on a Thursday. Friday in some places, when they release on a Thursday, especially in Japan, effectively we've destroyed all the Friday night stuff because of these kind of messes and you have and people having to diagnose them and use console commands to change their full body checking configuration. It just it just wasn't it was better than releasing on a Friday. I remember when they used to release on a Friday, but releasing on a Thursday is still the same problem, especially when you only have a release candidate out for literally one and a half hours. If VR chat's going to take anything back from this, I hope it's going to be that, you know, when you do a release candidate, give it a week. Most people don't have the want or desire to beta test totally broken builds because a lot of those betas are pretty... They, they try, but they're they're pretty broken, and that's why they're betas. But when you have something that you want to release, more people will be more than happy to break something on you when you think it's ready for release. If you think it's perfect, don't worry, someone's going to prove you wrong. So there's always more room for improvement on this release schedule. Extend the release candidates out so people can give you some real feedback on your totally working builds that just actually are not. All right, so that's me criticizing. I'm all done criticizing. Keep in mind that as far as events are concerned, starting this week on the 12th, which is really soon now, Comic VCAT and Music VCAT are coming out. So if you dig Japanese comics or music, it'll be in VR chat for their first major edition. So I would definitely check that out. It'll be going for about four days. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking out this new mic with me. I hope it sounds good. Ion Cannon, those like and sub buttons. And if you're a dev, either official or unofficial, hop into the dev dungeon by hitting up the Discord link in the description or scan the code uh, here. 
I guess. I appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Like, like it's not even close. But these legs aren't that long.